Today, I wanna to talk about making Lightroom do the work for you. I'm gonna teach you how to automate a ton of tasks that are gonna save time and frustration with everything from organization, editing, and exporting. Let's get started. I want to start in the import dialog box. There are actually a few tasks you could do here that really set you up for future success. One is automatically back up on import. Two is rename these files to something useful. And three, start to edit them right here on import. Let's get started. So I'm in my import dialog box. I'm copying from my SD card on the camera. And over here on the right hand side, I just need to make sure that make a second copy to is checked and I have my backup drive selected for my 2019 backups. On import, I'm automatically gonna make a second copy which keeps my precious files nice and safe. The second thing I mentioned is renaming. On import, look at these files, TA03516, that doesn't tell me anything useful about the file and its default file name other than the fact that I shot it after 3515 and before 3517. I love to rename my files and I've got a little preset and there's a link right down below this video with more of this information, but I simply add in the date it was captured, some custom text and the original file name in case I ever need to go back to the card and match it up. It's important to have that original name, but this way in the future, I can simply look at this file name sitting on the desktop or wherever it is and know that it was captured on May 28th. Garden Flowers is the series, so it probably is a picture of something in our garden. And it has the original file name, again, if I need to go back. That does make a longer file name. It shows you the sample right down below, but I find it incredibly useful without even opening the file. I know what it's gonna contain. So the next section that I wanna talk about here is really powerful. This is the develop presets that you can apply on import where your raws get edited a little bit. See, we recommend you shoot raw because it gives you the most flexibility in post-processing. But the downside is one, they don't look as good as the JPEGs coming straight out of the camera. And two, they do require at least some editing to look a little bit better and for you to share with the world. By doing this import preset right here, you kind of get the best of both worlds. Your computer, Lightroom, is gonna process them at least as much as your camera would have processed JPEGs, but of course they're still RAWs and they have that additional flexibility. Sometimes, depending on how you've shot, this developed preset might be enough that it's ready to share with the world and you don't need to edit anymore, solving that other issue as well. So here, I have a preset already set under Toby's presets my basic import, it makes some basic adjustments. I select that and now automatically on import, all of my pictures are gonna get a subtle edit. So to recap this section, we've made a backup automatically. We've renamed our files automatically and we're automatically editing our files. Now let's move into the develop module and talk about some of the automation there. All right, so I've imported my pictures and I've landed here in the library module where I've selected a few of them as my favorites just by hitting the one key to star them. Now, before we get into automating some of the tasks in the develop module, I just wanna put in a plug for learning a few keyboard shortcuts that really will speed up your workflow and your use of Lightroom. So I'm in grid view and I've got a couple of them favorited. So I noticed that this one has just a little bit of white peeking into it. If I hit E to take me into the loop view in that bigger view, I can see that I've got a little bit of distracting bright flower petals sticking in there. There are certain keyboard shortcuts that will take you from the library into the develop module and crop is one of those. If I hit the R key, that brings me into the develop module and specifically the crop toolkit where I can just simply drag down to adjust and fix this and then hit enter to accept that crop. I now sit here in the develop module where we can jump in and really start to talk about automating some of these develop tasks. So I'm in the develop module, I've finished that cropping and now let's look over here at the basic panel in the develop module. You can see that some of the sliders have already been moved a little bit. That's because of that import preset that I use right here. My basic import automatically adds a little bit of editing. If we wanna look at what this looks like before that happens, here it is, not terribly different, a little bit flatter, but let's undo that so we get our crop back and our basic. 
Now, at this point, if you're feeling stuck, you don't know which way to move these sliders, or you're just pressed for time, this button right here, Auto, does a pretty good job most of the time. It is important that you have one of the latest versions of Lightroom. It is greatly improved. Earlier versions of Lightroom certainly overexposed more often than I feel. And even in this example, it might be a little bit brighter than I like. You can, of course, then go and adjust any of these sliders back down. If you don't like this idea of pressing this auto button and giving Lightroom control over all of these sliders, well, of course, you can undo that, that control Z. And you can come in here and you can hold down shift and double click on any single one of these values and it will set it where it thinks it should be based on the auto button. But it gives you more selective control. One thing that is important to keep in mind though, that this only edits the basic panel. And that gives you a lot of control over your image in a fairly quick way, but there are incredibly powerful panels down here that if this is a really special image to you, you might put it on your wall or you might share it with the world. Take the time to work through some of these other panels. And I need to give a plug in for your local area adjustment tools, your linear graduated filter, your radial filter, and your adjustment brush. These are incredibly powerful, allowing you to affect just a single area of the image. And that is awesome. Look, I've got a ton more of this information at the Photo Enthusiast Network website. You can look for that link right down below this video. Now, another way that I want to talk about jumpstarting your editing, maybe you don't love that auto tool, but you do find yourself editing many of the pictures in the same fashion again and again and again. Presets, people. Please make presets that one click will jump you to all of those settings that you like to use. And again, you can adjust a little bit further if you want. I've got a whole series of presets sitting over here and I mouse over. They give you a quick little preview. Some are more or less appropriate for this single flower image, but there they are. They're very easy to make. After you move the sliders the way you want over there on the right hand side, you simply click the little plus sign at the top of the preset and say create presets. It will now then sit there in your presets for you to use in the future. And don't overlook making a preset for something so simple like adding a vignette around your image. You think about it, sliding all the way down here, going to the effects, moving the vignette slider left or right, that's much more time consuming than having a soft vignette that you click one time and it fixes that for you. Now that we've automated that whole develop module process, let's talk about automating the export process and sharing your images with the world in a, an efficient manner. So I've got this image, I'm ready to share it with the world. You go file, export dot dot dot, that's very dramatic. And then of course you have all of these options that you've got to work through. That takes time and energy and it wears me out. Much better is to set up presets that give you the settings and the destinations you need for your favorite places to share. So for instance, I have my Insta standard for Instagram that automatically sets it up to stick into an Instagram's folder and the perfect size and quality and sharpening. So when I want to export, I simply choose the image or images, go to file, export with preset and a Insta standard. As you can see, I also have ones for print and backing up and sending out to stock photo agencies. I've got one more bonus tip that I wanna just throw in here at the very end, and that is to use smart collections. They're an incredibly powerful way to help you virtually organize and find images that you might be frequently looking for. Let me show you how to set those up. They're back in the library module, so I'm gonna hit G to take me to the grid view, and they're down here in smart collections. If I click this little plus sign, I have the choice of creating a collection or a smart collection. A smart collection is constantly updated as criteria is met. Let's say I wanna find my favorite long exposure pictures. So I'll type that there. And rating is greater than or equal to three stars. That's gonna find all of my favorite pictures but I'm gonna click the little plus sign to add. There's so much other information that you can pull, including shutter speed is greater than, let's say 10 seconds. Now I hit create, and here are my favorite long exposure pictures I've taken so far this year. These are images 
that are three stars and longer than 10 seconds. Hey, if you found this video helpful, give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell so that you'll be notified of future videos, gear reviews, and lots more. And if you want more Lightroom and Photoshop and photography tutorials and education, consider joining Penn. We've got a 10-day free trial with free Lightroom video gifts that are yours to keep. Learn more at photorec.tv slash pen. And finally, I'd love to know your favorite time-saving tip in Lightroom. Leave that in the comments right down below. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.